morning everyone! So for today's video, I am finally going to cover some skincare myths and misconceptions I have seen floating around on the internet, in the world, in the universe. <laughs> I did one of these, or a video kind of similar to this, a couple months back called Korean Beauty Myths and Misconceptions. I will stick it here in a card. I think that's what they're called and I think it's on this side, but I will stick it there in case you want to check that out. But this video is going to be on general skincare myths. So let's go ahead and get started. Skincare myth number one, oily skin people do not need to use a moisturizer. Now this is an issue because by not using a moisturizer, you could be making your oily skin worse. Oil and sebum actually serve a very important purpose on your skin. It actually protects your skin, it creates a barrier to prevent irritation and dryness. If you're not using a moisturizer, your skin actually might be overproducing oil or overproducing sebum to compensate to create that barrier. So you're kind of helping your skin in using moisturizer. So if you're not using a moisturizer and you have oily skin, maybe try using an oil-free moisturizer and it could actually decrease your oil and sebum production. Skincare myth number two, the SPF in your makeup is enough to protect your skin. Now, if you've watched my videos, you guys know how much I love sunscreen. I try to avoid the sun as much as possible. The general rule of thumb when you're using sunscreen is about a teaspoon of sunscreen or about the size of an almond for your neck and your face to keep it protected. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think most of us can agree that we are not using that much foundation or powder on your skin. And in order to get that level of protection, from your makeup that your skincare provides or your sunscreen provides, you would have to be applying a teaspoon or an almond sized amount of makeup, and that's a lot of makeup. So basically the purpose of SPF and makeup is to kind of supplement your sunscreen. I'm sure I've missed places when I'm applying my sunscreen, so when I apply my makeup on top of my sunscreen, I could be hitting some spots that I may be missing, but alone, your makeup is not enough to keep your skin protected. Skincare myth number three, you can shrink the size of your pores. Now as enticing as that might sound, actually it's more of you can make your pores appear smaller. So while you can't change the physical size of your pores because those are just genetically decided, you can do things and take certain measures to make your pores appear smaller. So I would say the best way to deal with pores without getting too much into it is using a chemical exfoliator. It helps with cell turnover, it gets rid of all those dead cells, the dirt, the oil, the sebum that gets caught in the pores, and that's what causes that black appearance and blackheads, or that white appearance and whiteheads. So by getting rid of that, your pores are therefore less visible. So skincare myth number four, SPF 30 offers double the amount of protection as SPF 15. Now I know that seems kind of obvious, right? Of course something with an SPF of 30 has double the protection as SPF 15. Well, you're wrong and don't feel bad because I thought that too before I started learning about skincare and sun protection. But actually SPF refers to the amount of UVB protection you're getting. So something with an SPF of 15 has 94% protection from UVB rays while something with an SPF of 30 has 97% protection from UVB rays. So technically, SPF 30 does offer more protection than SPF 15, but the difference is only 3%. And that's generally why a lot of scientists have agreed that anything above an SPF 45 or 50 is kind of unnecessary and basically you're spending more money for SPF that really doesn't matter because there's no such thing as 100% protection from UVB rays. So as you can see, you know, SPF 30, you're already getting 97% protected. So, you know, spending more money on something to say that's SPF 70, you're really not getting that much more protection than the SPF 30, SPF 45, up to SPF 50. So it doesn't necessarily translate to it's double the amount of protection or however many times the protection. It actually more refers to the amount of UVB protection that you're getting. And even there, there's not really much of a difference between the numbers. As long as you're protecting your skin, a lot of scientists and dermatologists have agreed that an SPF 30 is generally good enough for most people for daily use. Skincare myth number five, washing your face a lot will actually help with acne. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with a point that I made earlier in the video, but actually overwashing your skin or washing your face a lot can encourage your skin to produce oil. And that's because there's a reason, like I said earlier, that your skin produces that oil. 
or sebum, that's there to protect your skin. So if you're constantly removing that layer, your skin is gonna want to constantly replenish that layer and therefore it produces a lot more oil than it would normally. Honestly, overwashing your skin is one of the worst things you can do if you have acne because it not only strips your skin, but it also throws your skin out of whack because it messes with the pH of your skin. So do not overwash your skin. Use a gentle cleanser and only do it when necessary. Skincare myth number six, expensive skincare is the best skincare. Now, ever since I entered the world of Korean beauty, I realized that this is a huge myth. Now, don't get me wrong, I love luxury brand skincare. If you guys want to see some of the recommendations I have when it comes to affordable skincare, I've made several videos on it. Just kind of peruse my channel a little bit, watch some videos, and you'll see that I have a lot of brands that I recommend to you guys that are not only affordable, but awesome as well. So don't think just because you don't have a lot of money, you can have an amazing skincare routine or use skincare products that are great for your skin. You can definitely do so. Just do your research, watch some of my videos, you know, what have you. <laughs> Skincare myth number seven, all cleansers should be foam and should leather up. A lot of foam cleansers, and obviously you have to check your ingredients on this, contain sodium lauryl sulfate. Now sodium lauryl sulfate is actually that ingredient that helps create that sudsy, foamy, kind of thick lather that a lot of cleansers contain. However, sodium lauryl sulfate is a very irritating ingredient on the skin. It's definitely bad for those of us who have sensitive skin or dry skin, and generally those type of cleansers tend to also throw your pH out of whack. So when you're looking for cleansers, try to find ones that are pH safe or possibly gel cleansers, just different forms. Don't stick to your typical foam cleanser because a lot of times that could be creating some irritation on your skin that you don't necessarily Skincare want. Skincare myth number eight. Hypoallergenic is only for people with sensitive skin. Now the term hypoallergenic is again kind of one of those marketing tactics that a lot of companies will use to sell products. Now hypoallergenic is obviously designed for people who have sensitive skin or certain allergies to ingredients in makeup or skincare. However, the problem with hypoallergenic is there are really no rules of what technically is or can be described as hypoallergenic. So if you do have sensitivities to certain ingredients in products, my best recommendation is to pay attention to the label and see if the products contain those ingredients. So for example, if you're sensitive to fragrance, obviously shoot for products that are labeled as fragrance-free versus hypoallergenic or Skincare myth number nine. You have to be a certain age to start using anti-aging skincare products. Now I get this question actually a lot on my videos or messages. People asking me what age is acceptable to start using anti-aging skincare products. Now, in all honesty, the sooner you start using these type of products, the better. I, for example, am 24 years old. I feel like that's fairly young. I don't know about you, but I use anti-aging skincare products. I've been using anti-aging skincare products probably since I was 16 or 17, and they've worked excellent on my skin. Now, I've actually heard and was told this, I remember when I was in college, that your skin actually gets used to certain anti-aging products, so try to save them for when you're older, and that's honestly just a myth. What's good for your skin is good for your skin, just like what you eat is good for your body. Your body doesn't necessarily get so used to eating well or working out or taking care of yourself so much so that it's not effective after a certain point. So it's the same concept when it comes to skincare. Your body is not going to get used to something that is good for it and it's not going to eventually become ineffective. So the sooner you use anti-aging skincare products, kind of the better. Obviously, you need to be aware of, again, ingredients that you could be more sensitive to at certain ages. For me, my skin is constantly changing. Something that I wasn't sensitive to maybe four years ago, I'm now sensitive to and vice versa. So it's obviously a very individual thing as anything involving skincare is, but generally, Using anti-aging skincare earlier in your life is a good thing. It's not gonna become ineffective as you get older and you don't have to be a certain age to start using these products. Last but not least, skincare myth number 10. You have to use all the same brand in your skincare routine. 
However, the only thing you have to be aware of when you're mixing and matching from different brands or skincare lines are the ingredients to make sure that they don't counteract with each other. Mainly you want to look out for, make sure you're not layering on a bunch of different acids or a bunch of different retinols because having too many of those can either counteract or they can be overwhelming for your skin. So that's really the only general rule of thumb that you want to look out for, but definitely mixing and matching from different brands is actually beneficial for your skin because you're able to mix and match to your skin's needs or your skin type. So it actually can have its benefits, but like anything and anything that I'm talking about in this video, definitely do your own research, make sure that you're using what works for you, and educate yourself, which is always a good thing, right? Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new. Just to clarify, I am not a doctor or a dermatologist, I'm just someone who likes to research skincare as a topic and present it to you guys. If anything, I hope you can take a couple points away from this video and I hope to encourage you guys to take better care of yourself or your skin or hey, if it's entertaining for you guys then that makes me happy too. As always, if you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!